Good afternoon. This is Pamela, and you are listening to Watchmen on the Pod. Today we are going to begin Chapter 3 in First John. And just a reminder, we are going through the Bible Commentary Series by J. Vernon McGee. All right, Chapter 3. The theme of Chapter 3. How the dear children may know each other and live together. The Father's love for his children. The two natures of the believer in action. How the dear children may know each other and live together. The last verse of chapter 2 belongs here with the first three verses of chapter 3. 1 John chapter 2 verse 29 reads, If ye, if ye know that he is righteous, ye know that every one that doeth righteousness is born of him. It is one thing to testify that we know Christ and are in him. It is quite another to have a life that reveals that he is our righteousness. It is wonderful to know positionally that we are in Christ and that we are accepted in the Beloved. But it is altogether different to have a life down here that is commensurate with that. John is telling us that the way we recognize other believers is by their lives and not by their lips. Righteousness is a family characteristic of the father and his children. God's children take after their father. They have his characteristics. The father's love for his children. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. First John chapter three verse one. This is very this is a very wonderful statement that John makes here. Let me give you my very literal translation of this verse. Behold ye, of what sort of love the Father hath bestowed upon, given to us, that we should be named children of God, and we are. And because of this, the world does not know, begin to even understand us, because it did not know, begin to even understand Him. John is saying that we do not expect to be the sons of God, we are the sons of God. A better translation includes the words, and we are. The child of God can say emphatically, I am a child of God through faith in Jesus Christ. We don't hope to be, we don't expect to be, but the thrilling fact is that every believer can exult and rejoice and constantly thank him that he is a child of God. We are boasters not in ourselves, but we are boasting of the wonderful shepherd that we have. John makes it perfectly clear that if you are a born-again child of God, you are going to exhibit a life that conforms to the Father. A child of God need not be in the false position of saying, as an old hymn says, "'Tis a point I long to know, Oft it causes anxious thought. Do I love my Lord or no? Am I his or am I not? Offer unknown. John says, now we are the children of God. Right now we are the children of God. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. The kind of love that John is talking about is a strange kind of love, an unusual kind of love, a kind of love to which we are not accustomed. God loves us. What manner of love the Father has for us. The love of God, that is, his love for us, is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. John will go on to show that God has demonstrated his love by giving his son to die for us. How many of us have someone who would die for us? How many folk would you be willing to die for? God loves you, and he has proven his love. He gave his son 
to die for you. The greatest motivating force in the world is God's love. Love is the greatest drive in the human family. A man falls in love with a woman, a woman falls in love with a man, and some make tremendous sacrifices for each other. When human love is genuine love, it, it is a beautiful thing. It is a noble thing. It is a wonderful thing. And it is a tremendous drive. But God's love for his children far exceeds anything we can experience on the human plane. The true child of God is going to, bro is going to prove his spiritual birth by being obedient to God's word. God's wonderful love for us should motivate us. It is that which is going to cause us to want to live for God. Behold, what an unusual kind, what a different kind of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. John has emphasized that we are God's children right now. This brings me to say that our salvation is in three tenses. I have been saved, I am being saved, and I shall be saved. 1. I have been saved. The Lord Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. John chapter 5 verse 24. The moment you trust Christ, you receive everlasting life, and you will never be any more saved than you are the moment you trust him. You are born again, born into the family of God. John is addressing little children. These are God's children. He says, What manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us? Why? Because we are his children. He has bestowed his love upon his children. And they respond to that love by obedience unto him and by living a life that is well-pleasing to him. Number two. I am being saved. Paul said, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Philippians 2, 12-13 Peter said, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Second Peter 3.18 John is talking to us along the same lines here. If we are the children of God, we are going to be obedient unto Him. We are going to grow, we are going to develop, and we are going to go in, go on in the faith of Jesus Christ. Therefore, we can say that we are being saved. Number three, I will be saved. When the Lord Jesus comes again for his own, we will experience the final stage of our salvation. Sin no longer will have power over us, and we will be with the Lord forever. Amen and amen. And that, my friends, was chapter 3, verse 1. Praise God. I love you all so very much. I do hope you have a very good evening. Right now it's about 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Keep your eyes on Jesus and your nose in the book. And embed the Word of God upon the tablets of your heart. I love you all so very, very much. God bless you.